Hi, this is Dr. Rudresh. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Medical Microbiology Guide. Please subscribe and press the bell button for more videos. In this session, we will study one of the inflammatory biomarker, C-reactive protein, which is in short form known as CRP. Let's see what is CRP. CRP was first discovered in 1930 by Tillet and Francis. They found that the serum of patients with acute inflammation reacted with the somatic carb carbohydrate antigen of the Streptococcus pneumoniae and hence they named the protein as C-reactive protein. C-reactive protein has a molecular weight of 1.15 kilodalton and it is composed of 5 identical subunits which are arranged as cyclic pentamers. Hence, they belong to a family of acute phase reactant proteins called as pentraxins. The gene coding for C-reactive protein is located in chromosome number 1 and it is synthesized by liver due to various stimuli. Let's see the normal value of CRP in healthy individuals. Normally, CRP in healthy individuals will be at a concentration of 0.8 to 3 mg per liter. The values will not differ between genders. But, Due to age, the elderly individuals may have higher values compared to the adults. In some normal physiological conditions like pregnancy, CRP values may increase. Now let's see what is the function of CRP. CRP is the first pattern recognition receptor to be identified. It is a non-specific acute phase protein which has both pro-inflammatory and anti-inflammatory effects. Now, let's study what are the pro-inflammatory effects. CRP recognizes the phosphocholines, phospholipids, fibronectin, chromatin and histones present on the dead and dying cells and also binds to bacteria which may have similar kind of molecules. Membrane bound CRP will activate the complement system via C1Q molecule. This triggers the activation of classical complement pathway and forming the membrane attack complex. The complement byproducts will help in the opsonization by macrophages and then it clears the necrotic and apoprotic cells and bacteria. So there are some anti-inflammatory effects of the CRP. It prevents the addition of neutrophils to endothelial cells thereby preventing the marginalization of neutrophils and extravasation of neutrophils. It inhibits the superoxide production which is helpful in the inflammation and it increases the interleukin 1 receptor antagonist production thereby reducing the inflammation. So now we will see when the CRP is increased. The rate of CRP produc uh, production increases in inflammation, infection, trauma, necrosis and also some of the conditions like uh, malignancies, cardiovascular disorders and in some autoimmune disorders. The interleukin 6 produced by macrophages, T cells and adipocytes will stimulate the production of CRP. The other cytokines like transforming growth factor beta 1 and tumor necrosis factor alpha can also stimulate the production of CRP. 
the rate of production of crp depends upon the amount of inflammation which is going on during an inflammation crp is produced at a rate of 5 mg per liter by 6 hours the values will double in 8 hours reaching a peak at around 50 hours and the half life of the molecule in circulation is around 5 to 7 hours now let's see what are the methods of crp testing latex agglutination test is most widely used and it lacks its sensitivity and also sometimes some of the latex agglutination test gives variation from lab to lab hence they are replaced by elisa immunoturbidimetry nephelometry and immunodiffusion now we will study what are the uses of crp estimation crp is a clinical marker frequently used to assess the presence of infection and sepsis among critically ill patients increased crp correlates with the increased risk of organ failure and or death hence the crp is a good indicator for icu patients crp is a good marker for monitoring the secondary infections over the existing primary infections and also it helps in the assessment of responses to treatment hence crp can be used both as a diagnostic and prognostic test crp can also be used to assess some of the non-infectious diseases like diabetes hypertension and cardiovascular disorders so if there is an elevated basal levels of crp then it increases the risk of diabetes hypertension and cardiovascular disorders estimation of the crp level in serum or csf is useful to discriminate between the bacterial and viral meningitis but many studies they suggest even in viral meningitis also the crp can be increased the estimation of crp levels in transplant patients will help in differentiating the infection from graft versus host disease in autoimmune disorders crp levels will correspond to the disease activity and it also reflect the efficacy of drug therapy in such conditions how to interpret the crp test values we know the normal range is 0.8 to 3 mg per liter anything beyond 3 mg per liter up to 10 mg per liter is considered as moderate any value beyond 10 mg per liter will suggest an ongoing inflammation now we will see the advantages of the crp test the crp value rapidly increases in response to the inflammatory stimuli the crp values rises by 50 to 100 times following the inflammation wide range of clinically relevant values are detectable the values are unaffected by age and gender and the crp estimation can be done on the stored sera the quantitation is precise and reproducible lastly we will see the hscrp hscrp stands for high sensitivity crp the measurement of low level of crp using laser nephelometry is known as the hscrp the test gives result in 25 minutes with a sensitivity of up to 0 0.04 mg per liter the test is used to assess the risk of cardiovascular disease and damage to the vascular endothelium hscrp along with the lipid profile and coagulation profile will help in the assessment of cardiovascular disease risk is low when the 
value is less than 1 mg per liter. Moderate when the values are between 1 to 3 mg per liter and the risk is very high when the values are above 3 mg per liter. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe and press the bell button for more videos.